Hello everyone and welcome to today's class on inventory management. I hope you are doing well. All right, to, so to start off with, let's try to understand exactly what inventory is. All right, so inventory is basically the stock of any item or resource used in an organization and it can include raw materials, work in process and finished goods. So again, inventory is when you pile up or you make extra of a certain amount of good goods um, and you want to basically keep these goods in stock so that in case there is a sudden change in demand, you have some extra goods in store. And so you can um, fulfill that demand. Now, as I just mentioned, there are three kinds of inventory there's raw materials so if you have a factory you definitely want to keep some excess raw material just in case there's a shortage in the market um, in many cases companies like to keep some extra um, work in process stock as well which is um, semi-made stock so uh, you know half made stock and many times uh, companies like to do this because they use a postponement strategy and so they have goods that are half made and once they get an order from the customer, they um, customize it according to the uh, customer's requirements. So that's why companies many times keep a little bit of extra work in process just in case um, there's again a sudden increase in demand. And then of course, there's finished goods, which are completed goods that the company keeps in stock. Now, interestingly, <clears throat> as far as inventory goes, Inventory is the single largest asset on a company's balance sheet. So if you're looking at, you know, in terms of the value of, of goods that a company holds, um, a lot of value is in um, inventory. And so this is a very important uh, part and management of inventory is extremely crucial for the functioning of a company. In general, um, Inventory accounts for 40 to 60% of current assets. Again, that is a huge amount usually for companies. So if you really want to understand what inventory is um, and you want to visualize what inventory is, just imagine, uh, you know, stacks and stacks of money sitting around on shelves and in trucks and in planes while in transit. And the reason is that, you know, um, a lot of money is gets stuck um, in inventory when it's made. Um, so these are very highly valued products that the company, um, you know, that's manufactured them has put in, you know, time, money, effort. And so there's a lot of investment in inventory. And so, um, again, you know, if you really want to think about inventory, it's basically the company's money. And so, as I just mentioned, you know, it's um, money that's stuck in, in these, you know, either it's raw materials or semi-finished goods or finished goods. Um, it's not liquid money. So it's not that, you know, this inventory can easily be, you know, just uh, the raw materials, for example, that you bought. It's not so easy to go in the market and sell it and get your money back. Uh, there may be price fluctuations. There may not be a demand for the raw materials. So uh, once, you know, a company invests in, in inventory, their money is stuck. So again, this is, uh, you know, a pretty um, big decision factor about, you know, how much inventory a company should have how that inventory should be man managed in the best way possible. So this is a very uh, big topic as far as uh, supply chain management goes. So if inventory is such a big problem, or not a problem, but if so much money is get stuck in inventory, then the big question is, why do companies keep inventory? Well, there are many reasons. One of the reasons I mentioned just a little while ago, there may be a fluctuation in demand. And when there is a fluctuation in demand, companies want to make sure that they can actually meet the demand expectations of customers and that their customers don't go to um, any other competitor. Um, there also may be an unreliability of supplies. So uh, for example, if you are making goods, you may want to just sort of stock up on the raw materials a little bit because perhaps uh, you, know, you have a feeling that the market you may, may run short on those raw materials. So you may decide to pile up on them. 
price prote protection. Um, there may be fluctuations in prices in the market. Um, some of your uh, key ingredients, for example, and so you may want to just buy them in excess in in um, in advance uh, just to protect you know the price that you're buying them on. Also, um, quantity discounts. So many times if you buy big quantities of goods, you can get discounts. And so companies like to avail those discounts. And so they buy some excess inventory. Um, lower ordering costs. So um, if you buy once, then you don't really need to pay um, for several shipments. You'll only be paying for one shipment, for example. And so um, the whole, you know, all the transportation costs, you'll be saving on all of that. Um, so this is just an example of, you know, lower ordering costs. So uh, you just people like to many times avail, um, you know, these kind of opportunities and they decide to pile up on inventory. Geographical specialization, again, maybe um, there are certain things that you need to procure from abroad, from a specific country, and there may be certain um, duties that you need to pay. And so you don't want to keep on paying those duties frequently, so you just kind of order in advance and hold on to some excess stock. So um, again, these are all reasons that companies really pile up on their um, inventory. Generally speaking, if you go to a company and you see that there's a lot of inventory, uh, could be, uh, for example, raw materials or work in process, or let's say finished goods, um, you'll generally think, oh my goodness, wow, there's a lot of activity going on in this company. Um, they must be doing really well. Uh, and you know, you just kind of feel like it's a successful company. But the truth is that generally speaking, um, if there if there is a company and you know you see piles and piles of inventory um, in the company, it's a bad it's really bad news, and usually it's um, because you know they're having trouble perhaps selling their goods. Maybe the design of their goods aren't very good. There may be you know reasons such as poor quality or you know, unreliable suppliers. And so they don't have a good relationship with their suppliers. So they're having to pile up on goods. Maybe their machines have been breaking down. So that's why there's a lot of half-made goods, um, inefficient layouts. So just, you know, things are just running really slow, lengthy setups uh, of their machinery. So, uh, you know, there could be uh, many, many reasons, but um, it's very important to know that, you know, a whole lot of inventory sitting around in a company is is bad news. Um, so that's you know it's a warning sign if you see those that kind of inventory. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about inventory management and what inventory management is. It's the process that controls the availability of products and raw materials and manages supply and demand variability. So again, you know there are lots of moving parts right, in inventory management. You need to make sure that you have enough goods coming in so that you can manufacture um, as much as you need to manufacture. You wanna make sure that you have the raw materials. Um, and you also wanna make sure that uh, the amount of inventory that you're bringing in is matching um, the amount that you need to make um, in order to fulfill the demand. So you don't wanna to have too much inventory, but you definitely also don't want too little inventory because that can also lead to problems of shortages. And if you have shortages, then you know you're, you may not be able to manufacture your goods. And like I mentioned a little while earlier, your customers may decide to go to another one of your competitors and that would be a big problem. Um, so, those are certain things to keep in mind um, and you want to make sure that you have the right material at the right place at the right time. I mean, that's kind of, you know, it's a dicey situation because, um, you know, how do you know exactly how much you should have? But again, this is where inventory management really comes um, into play. There's also the issue of capacity. I mean, how much you can actually store. No, no company has you know, unlimited kind of you know, capacity to store inventory. And you also have to keep in mind that you know, if you order things um, from let's say a supplier, there's a lead time. There, it takes a little bit of, a, of time for those, thing, uh, those goods to reach. So you kind of have to factor in all of these things when you are managing inventory. The amount of inventory that a company keeps is really dependent on many, many factors. 
you know, your forecasting, how accurate is your forecasting, the demand, is there an increase or, in, you know, a lot of variability of, of demand in the market, is it going up and down all the time? How long does it take for you to manufacture things, to distribute things? The number of stocking points that you have, your supply planning strategies, your customer level of service. There's just a whole lot of things that you need to consider when you're doing inventory management. And that's why it's complex. It is not something that's easy to do and many companies actually struggle with this. Um, that's also one of the reasons that uh, we're, we're learning about it so that we are in a better position to know how to manage inventory. All right, so if we think about inventory costs, what are inventory costs? Um, I'm going to talk quite a bit about this in um, this lecture, but just to give you a high level overview, inventory costs include money, money that you have paid to buy that inventory or to you know, manufacture that inventory. So it's definitely money, um, space. So um, if you have inventory, you need to keep it somewhere. So it requires space. Now, if you also have inventory, there is a probability that there may be some inventory stolen or uh, there may be inventory that's damaged or just gets outdated, obsolete. It may deteriorate over time. For example, if you keep something that's made out of metal for extended period of time, it may get a little rusty. And um, so these are all costs of holding inventory. Then there's also the cost of labor because you need to have labor that, that keeps on regularly checking on the inventory and checking the quality and putting the inventory away, retrieving it when needed, packing it, shipping it, accounting for inventory. So these are all the various costs that are associated with inventory. And as you can see, there are quite a few costs. But in supply chain management, uh, what they've done um, quite effectively is that they've decided that they have divided the cost of inventory into two main buckets. The first bucket is carrying or holding costs of inventory. And the second bu bucket is ordering or setup costs of inventory. These are two um, separate buckets and I will be explaining each one of these um, to you. All right, so I'm going to start off with carrying or holding costs. And uh, before I go into depth of what all is included in this, I just want to give you a high level overview. So holding costs or carrying costs of inventory basically means if you keep inventory in storage, there are certain costs and we discussed some of, some of those costs, right? There's storage costs, there's a bunch of costs that just to hold that inventory in your warehouse, for example, uh, we discussed, you know, labor has to go on, keep checking on the, on the store, you know, the inventory that you've kept in storage. Um, there's rent involved, right? So you have to pay perhaps, you know, a warehouse to hold on to that inventory. So anything that you, any cost that is um, uh, incurred uh, while just holding the inventory in your facility, that is called carrying or holding costs. So um, again, you know, the question of why people, you know, why companies hold uh, inventory, uh, again, I've covered this, but just to um, give you a little bit more information, it's basically one of the key reasons is to buffer against uncertainties, right? You want to make sure if there's a sudden shift in demand or supply or delivery or manufacturing processes, any major shifts or changes or uncertainties that a company has to deal with, um, they just want to keep some extra um, inventory in order to deal with that. Could be also speculation, um, you know, you, you feel that the market may be shifting or changing and you kind of place a bet and you say, okay, I'm gonna have to keep some extra inventory. All right, now coming back again to the carrying costs, right, that we were just talking about. So these are again, as I mentioned just a slide ago, um, these are the costs of holding inventory in your, or carrying inventory in your facilities. This includes storage, so definitely the cost of storing inventory, 
taxes because now these are your assets and you know companies need to pay taxes on their total you know the amount of um, inventory they're holding that's definitely you know part of their assets they will be charged for uh, the amount of inventory they're holding insurance so a lot of companies pay insurance on their inventory just in case you know something happens to the inventory um, and then there's also capital costs and damage or obsoles obsolescence uh, costs. So again, if anything happens to the inventory, it's damaged, all of those, that's all part of the cost of holding on to inventory. So if you hold on to the inventory, these are kind of the costs that are going to impact a company. And so um, generally speaking, what happens is that companies, um, you know, calculate a carrying uh, cost percentage. So they uh, take all of these costs and they, you know, convert it to a percentage and they say, you know what, the total cost of carrying inventory is a certain, uh, you know, percentage of the um, inventory cost, the total inventory value, sorry, excuse me. So they take this, they'll convert it into a percentage and that's the carrying cost percentage. And then they will multiply that uh, basically by the inventory value. And once you multiply the carrying cost percent by a, an inventory value, that is your carrying or holding costs. And again, this is the cost associated or the expense associated just for maintaining or holding inventory. Now, um, again, as I just mentioned, figuring out what that percentage is, is usually a little difficult for companies. And so many times they go, um, in order to figure this out, they just kind of find out what's the general average in the inventory, in the industry. And then they say, okay, well, you know, ours is gonna be kind of along the same lines. And that's how they usually figure it out. But um, because there are a whole lot of uh, different aspects that need to be considered. Okay, so again, carrying cost, you basically figuring out carrying cost or holding cost by multiplying the carrying cost percentage by the average inventory value. So for example, if the carrying cost percentage is 20% and um, the average in, uh, and the annual inventory expense for an, in, uh, for an enterprise, so again, the average inventory value is 1 million, then, um, the amount of carrying or holding cost is going to be 20% of 1 million, which is 200,000. Okay, next I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what inventory ordering or setup costs is. And this is the other big bucket of costs of inventory that companies have to deal with. So um, let's try and figure out what this is. But before I go in and before I kind of tell you a little bit and go into the details, let me just explain to you on a high level what um, inventory ordering or setup costs are. So these are basically, let's say you um, want to um, get a shipment of really, you know, um, uh, some goods from China. And you want to, make, let's say, for example, you are for, you have a small little boutique, and you want to get some really good furniture from China. You realize that the costs are low in China, and you can get some good furniture, and then you want to sell that furniture here locally, um, on a, and by charging a premium to your customers. Well, if you decide to do something like that then you have to pay some upfront ordering or setup costs. So maybe there's a minimum quantity, for example, that you need to buy. And then, you know, you have to arrange for the shipment, right? So that's part of the shipment is part of your ordering or setup cost. Um, the import export duty, all of the different aspects for you to bring in those goods. That's part of your ordering or setup costs. And companies obviously, you know, don't want to keep on paying a lot of ordering or setup costs. So they would prefer to pay it once and then kind of just use those goods for an extended period of time because those can really add up pretty quickly. All right, that being said, let's learn a little bit more about inventory or inventory ordering and setup costs. So again, ordering costs are, or setup costs are incurred when ordering more inventory and when setting up to go into production to fill the order. 
So absolutely, there's the inventory, you know, you're ordering, again, all of the, the shipment cost, all of that, but also there is, a, you know, additionally, there's also some setup costs. And those setup costs, again, are to set up, for example, your machinery um, to start working. And so those are also costs that need to be considered. Now, um, the cost, okay, all right. So again, you, there, you know, you don't want to have, you know, go, let me give you another example. Let's say you are manufacturing, you are, you have a small bakery and uh, you, um, you, you need to buy some ingredients for your bakery. Um, let's say there's sugar and flour and um, eggs. Now, yes, if you want to make cakes, uh, you need these goods, but does, do you really need to go and get fresh sugar every day or fresh flour every day from the market? No. Because if you go and start doing that, then you're gonna be spending money uh, for the car to go to the store and bring it back every single day, right? Um, there's a high ordering. These are all examples of high ordering or setup costs. So, um, and so obviously this is part of your setup cost because you need those goods to set up for actually making the cakes. So it makes a lot more sense to kind of perhaps buy the sugar or the flour and the eggs maybe for a week and to keep them um, for a week and use them over a period of that a week and then you know you can go into the market and get more so this is an example of reducing ordering or setup costs all right so um, now that we've understood um, these two buckets of costs um, there's also another type of cost that many times companies face and this is the cost of backlogs or stockouts so if you for example just uh, have a shortage of goods you don't have enough inventory of finished goods um, this is known as a stockout and this is basically an unfulfilled customer order or commitment. And if this happens, there's a big problem that you'll be facing because your customers, you, you would be losing customers and your customers would thereby be going to other competitors. All right, next I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about inventory reorder points. And so these are the points at which a company decides to reorder inventory. So there are two methods to figuring out the reordering points. Um, the first one is periodic uh, reordering cycle control. Um, so in this periodic method, what happens is that inventory is checked regularly for various SKUs and various products. And so um, if the uh, quantity goes down to a certain point, um, or a target level. So there's a target level pretty much for every SKU. And um, if, if the inventory you know, starts falling below that target level, then it's, there's immediately uh, an order that's placed for it. So inventory is checked periodically. And that's why this is called a periodic um, cycle control. So um, for, for those goods that sell very, very fast for a company and they have a high turnover, usually those products, or their inventory of those products are checked more frequently. Um, and so obviously if there's a very long period for, you know, that you leave in between checking of the inventory, so if you don't do it very regularly, you do it over, you know, you take a really long period of time to check inventory, then the, the company is going to be facing um, more risk. So um, generally speaking, uh, this periodic inventory system um, it happens in companies and the periodically the inventory is checked and it's checked quite regularly. Now, the other uh, inventory method called the perpetual inventory uh, system, according to this, um, your inventory, your point of sales, at point of sales inventory is kind of checked regularly and put into some sort of a computer system. So let's say at the end of the day, you sold 50 units. Um, again, this is falling below uh, you know, a certain target amount that you need to keep for every single one of those kinds of products, then you will immediately place an order. So the perpetual inventory system, it's constantly checking on a regular basis, the inventory levels for every type of good. And um, as soon as it falls, you know, uh, comes close to falling, but, you know, falling below the target level, then more inventory is procured. 
So um, there's a very big question, um, and this question is faced pretty much across the board um, by all people managing supply chains. And the question is, how much of inventory to make or order? And so luckily nowadays there is a model um, that, uh, that you know, operation management specialists have come up with and it's called the economic order quantity model. And so um, you know, it basically answers the question of how much you should order. And so this uh, method of calculating how much to order minimizes your a company's total costs. So that's why a lot of people um, have shifted towards using economic order quantity to figure out how much they should make or order. Uh, I will be making a whole separate lecture on calculating economic order quantity of goods, um, and I'll be sharing that with you soon. All right, so now the measures of inventory. So if there is a company and they have inventory, um, again, they wanna keep a tight watch on how much inventory they have. Um, there are certain metrics, there are certain measurements that companies um, uh, use. And I'll be talking to you a little bit about two very common uh, methods that are used um, and they are uh, ratios by the name of inventory turn ratio and days of supply ratio. So um, let's talk about inventory turns. So this is basically a convenient measure of how effectively inventories are being used in the inventory. And, and so basically, if you want to calculate this, inventory turns is the annual cost of goods sold divided by the average inventory in dollars. So um, let's, let me try and explain that in, easier, in an easier way. So uh, first off, you need to know that the higher the inventory turn ratio is, the better it is. So um, let's look at an example. Um, and here the annual cost of goods is $1 million and the average inventory is 500,000. And so your inventory turns are, you know, um, average cost of goods sold, 1 million divided by average inventory, 500,000. And that's two inventory turns, right? So what does this mean? It means that with $500,000 uh, worth of inventory, a company is able to generate 1 million in sales. Now, the situation is that it would be much better if, um, the average amount of inventory goes lower. So for example, if, uh, you know, if, if this were to be raised to 10, let's say, and uh, we brought this down to 100,000, then we would be able to say that, look, um, you know, sales are generated with only $1 million of sales are being generated by 100,000 average inventory. So the whole idea is you want to keep a lower amount of inventory and generate more sales out of that. So um, you, you know, that's the whole idea. So if a company wants to have a look as to how their inventory is doing, if they have too much or too little, this is a great measure. Figure out how much is how many uh, inventory turns you have. You definitely want more. You want less inventory and more sales being generated from them. All right, another metric to keep an eye on is the days of supply uh, ratio. And in this, the lower, the better. So this is kind of the opposite situation from the inventory turns. Here you want a lower um, ratio. And this is basically the, the days of supply is a measure of the equivalent number of days of inventory on hand based on usage. So um, the way you calculate this is inventory on hand divided by daily usage. And so um, you definitely want to keep that you know, low. All right, now the value of stock. Uh, so many times, you know, um, for example, in the carrying cost, you had a carrying cost percentage and you multiplied by that, multiplied that by the average cost of inventory. The big question is, how do you figure out the cost of inventory or the value of the inventory that a company has on hand, let's say today? So um, in order to do that, um, you know, and you want to make sure that there's not a lot of error because if, if there are a lot of errors, uh, you know, it can, for example, come across that you have, you know, you don't have enough assets, you have very few assets and you have a lot more uh, and vice versa. If you have too much, you know, you're, you're counting a lot and you actually don't have as much, then you can run into shortages, right? So you can maybe you're 
counting that you have 150 units in stock. And so you get, go and get orders of 150 and then you realize, oops, I only have 100 in stock. So that's not a good situation. So either ways, you want to be very accurate with the value of stock. The value of stock can be calculated in many different ways. Um, and I'm just going to you know, mention, a few, I've mentioned a few of them on the slide. The first one is the actual cost. And here you basically identify um, the units, you count the units and you multiply it by the price that you paid to buy them. Um, the other method is the FIFO, first in, first out method. This assumes that the first units arrived in stock are the first sold. So the value of the remaining stock is set by the amount paid uh, for the last units bought, then there's last in, first out, assumes that the late, latest units added to the stock are used first, so the value of the remaining stock is set by the amount paid uh, for the earliest units bought, and then there's average, weighted average cost, finds the average unit of cost over a typical period. So again, this is the whole idea of the slide, is to kind of figure out you know, how, what price you should count. You know, So you can definitely count the number of pieces, but then how much should you multiply it by um, in terms of the price of the goods? So um, should you be paying the actual cost, weighted average, last and first out, first and first out? And again, these are all, you know, this is a lot of accounting. I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but I think you do really need to understand that um, it's very important that the value of stock is accurate and there are several ways that um, the value of stock can be calculated. And so um, you need to be sure that the right method is used for the, for the company that you are trying to calculate the value of stock for. With that, I come to an end to this lecture. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a lot about inventory management, which is a very important subject in supply chain management. Thank you very much.